Yeah, I okay. Sorry for the slight delay. So uh, let me give you a, give you a heads up. Uh, this is not going to be a conventional tech talk. This is my first tech talk. Oh, not yet. All right. Please, please come in the front. In that case, I'm running out of time. <laughs> yes. Um, in case are, uh, there's any kind of feedback or comment, please find me on Facebook, Twitter, or Bharat Matrimony or whatever. Yeah. That's that's cool. So yes, I am Rohit Nair. Hello. Yeah, so I'll be speaking about Suru today. And uh, let's get on with the problem statement. So let's think of this. Uh, we, we go into a grocery store. And what if the grocery store has this uh, rule wherein you cannot buy groceries without having an assistant with you? You always want an assistant with you to assist you to buy groceries. You cannot do it yourself. So what happens in the process? Yes, uh, your grocery, your, your executive is assisting you throughout. He doesn't, uh, he's not going to leave you uh, or he's not going to uh, give you all responsibilities of uh, buying your own stuff. And what if uh, the executive finds some attractive customer or, you know, and leaves you stranded? Okay, what happens after that? He gives attention to the customer. What happens next? You are left stranded and you are waiting for another executive to come by and help you buy groceries. So you are dependent on the executive. And in the process, as a consequence, your dinner gets delayed. So what could you do, possibly? That's a possibility, but uh, we are not going to go into that. So yes, get rid of the executive and do it yourself. All right. So yes, uh, uh, what I want to stress right now is about self-service. So developers always need resources and resources could mean you or, uh, you know, resources in, uh, resource in terms of uh, uh, your, your physical boxes or uh, your time and stuff like that. So what generally happens is, uh, you you are always um, as as a sysadmin you are always interrupted with a lot of attractive work, and then the developer is now uh, waiting for, for 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 some other executive or, or or a sysadmin basically to come and help him out. So the developer keeps waiting and then uh, keeps waiting. So yeah, so what if, what if the developer had the ability to gather resources himself without really waiting, without really waiting for the sysadmin to, you know, get him, uh, get him uh, acclimatized with, uh, with, with everything? Yes, we would never doubt our attractiveness. That's something else. And things would definitely be on schedule. So yes, uh, we have a similar scenario basically. So. We have an array of web uh, um, web servers, and we always our, our developers are always trying new stuff because of which uh, we always have to be with them, assisting, deploying code, and we we have to stick around with them so as to uh, uh, to, to so as to check if everything is uh, is is okay if if. Because most of our testing runs on uh, production servers. And so we have to be there along with them to see if things are properly uh, scheduled and, uh, we, uh, and, and that there are no mess ups or anything of that sort. So yes, that's what, you know, we deploy, we test, and we repeat the procedure every single time. So we realize that uh, Yeah, so we realize that uh, when it comes to testing and staging, we, we need not invest a lot of time along with the developers. You could just give them 
we can we could just give them the handle and let them navigate throughout and we could just be there do something else and invest our time in something more productive so we thought why not use suru an application which which helps them take care of their own resources lets them play let lets them play uh, play around with uh, stuff they want so yeah so what do we ma uh, primarily manage we manage web servers cdns um, Redis cache servers and stuff like that, and uh, we basically scale horizontally. Our, our web servers are always scaled, scaled horizontally. So I'll, I'll let you know how Suru helps us manage a uh, staging environment. So yes, these are uh, just basic uh, basic stuff about Suru. So Suru was developed by Globo. It's an open source pass, and uh, we can write apps in any programming language of our choice and we deploy it using git so yes this is this is the architecture i think it's not very clear um, so let me tell you how it works so the yeah the uh, is it is it visible to all of you guys oh crap okay that's fine i'll i'll just uh, walk you through it so the laptop you see here right now uh, is your application developer so the application developer basically contacts the suru server he makes uh, he makes a core deployment basically he puts uh, pushes his uh, core through uh, through git and the suru api or the suru server rather will now contact docker all right will now will now contact docker and docker will now spawn uh, as many instances as uh, the application developer requires so basically um uh yeah so here we are using docker as a provisioner so basically you can use suru uh with juju uh which manages your aws instances and uh, uh, as a as a provisioner and uh, docker also but, but but we went with docker because we did not want to use aws in the first place yeah again uh uh on the top right uh, below the the beneath the cloud we could see an http router so that's that's a hipache router it's it's basically uh, a load balancer a software load balancer yeah it's a software load balancer so all the requests will now hit the http router and it will be load balanced among all, all your docker nodes so that is how it works and we also have a gandalf server which manages all your git repos Okay, uh, is everybody well versed with Docker? Okay, so uh, so let me just just explain what Docker is all about. So Docker is basically you can consider it as a wrapper around LXEs, and uh, LXC is basically a kernel feature available from uh, 2.6.24. So yeah, uh, it it doesn't have a hypervisor. All right, it it has C groups. it uh, so a hypervisor basically resides between uh, your kernel and your hardware we don't have a hypervisor we have uh, we have c groups which and it's a built in functionality so yes uh, silly stuff that's okay yeah that's us and so we are all set to create a kernel uh, we are all set to create a container uh, which which shares certain uh, Uh, uh what do you say characteristics which are uh, provided by uh, the kernel so yeah that's what you know there's no hypervisor and uh, it makes makes it really fast yeah that's about it that's uh, docker in a nutshell just in case you guys want to know what docker is please uh, google for mithun brain transplant and you'll probably understand that yeah so uh, the required entities uh, here are uh, hipache that i mentioned it's an http uh, software load balancer gandal for managing git repos redis is used by hipache for mapping uh, the thing is the docker nodes that come up they they are all ephemeral in nature so basically they have um, they they have different ips that get spawned as as soon as you spawn a new uh, a docker instance 
you are uh, it's allotted a new IP. So there there has to be some kind of mapping, and Redis basically provides it. MongoDB basically it's it's uh, used by Suru for for a normal bookmarking. Demo I let me see if I have. Okay, just hold on, this is... So, uh, we are just trying to deploy a basic WordPress application via Suru. And as you can see, um, on the right hand side, this is created by my friend Kalyan, he's... Uh, you can see Facebook and other tabs open, that's relevant though. Yeah, so we, we are going to try and create a, a simple Suru application. So, yeah, we create a Word, we are creating a WordPress application. So we create a, created an application, now we are unzipping everything into a, a, a root directory. Initializing the, the Git repo. And after this is done, we will push all of this to the Suru server. It's okay. It happens to everyone, come on. So as, as soon as you commit and, and push, Suru will contact Docker, Docker will start spawning instances. Yeah, this is when, uh, uh, you know, the, the magic starts. Exactly, so Docker, uh, so Suru has now uh, contacted Docker, Docker has created some instances. Now we list applications and as you can see, there's, there's just one, uh, one application that has been set and now uh, we, we see there is an error because uh, it, it doesn't have uh, a MySQL application running. So we will bind the Suru, uh, uh, the, the Docker instances to a MySQL application. So we require a requirements.apt file wherein we mention all, uh, all, all that is required and uh, then we push it now what happens is it will it will delete the old uh, docker instances and will spawn the new ones Yes, so now uh, we will, we will uh, try and export the database settings to uh, the Docker uh, web servers. And this is how we do it, we just bind, so basically we are binding a server, uh, a service to uh, the WordPress application. This is all, all, all done via uh, Docker instances. So uh, as we can see, our, uh, our site is up now. And these are your environment variables that get uh, 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 that get exported into the web servers. So uh, when there are times when we want to scale now, you now there is there is only one instance of Docker. So what we'll do is we'll add more uh, instances to uh, this this setup. There's only one unit, and we are adding two more.
Yeah. Now we can see there are three uh, uh, Docker instances that are running. Yes. That's about it. And uh, so there are other tools uh, like Flynn, which uh, which also does similar stuff. But then uh, the difference between Flynn and Suru is uh, the importance given to service. Uh, uh, importance given to scaling services. Now, uh, we spoke to a couple of uh, engineers at uh, Globo, and they said that uh, it's, it's, it's all about the design principle. They wanted to basically scale uh, web apps and not services, because services, we don't know how services can be scaled, right? They can easily they can either go horizontal or vertical. So uh, the only uh, way they could come up with uh, adding services was uh, 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 binding uh, proprietary services or stuff like that to Suru. So that's that's just the basic between uh, Flynn and Suru. So yeah, the challenges is is less documentation. Uh, Suru, the only uh, place where you can find Suru uh, documentation is 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 on the website. Nowhere else. There are too many dependencies. Like we we saw, there are uh, uh, I mean there's there's a Hipache server, there's a Redis. Uh, there, there's circus and there's whatnot, and uh, it's it's only built for web apps. It, now that that's that's in a way, it it could be considered as um, you know uh, as a merit also because uh, because we we will only focus on scaling stuff horizontally. And yes, there are buggy scripts uh, with uh, with Git. There are there are a lot of uh, pre-received hooks that that has to go in. But uh, they were all buggy, and uh, my my friend Kalyan, he actually, uh, uh, you know, he fixed all of them before we could go uh, go on with this. Yes. So, do we have any questions? Uh, why do you think uh, it is better than, or what do you have? Uh, what is your opinion about Heat uh, and OpenStack? Uh, basically, Heat. By heat, you can um, decide your templates and put uh, all this thing over OpenStack. So why do you think that this is not good or? Uh, I bad? think I think this is uh, easily manageable. It's very easily manageable. I mean, you can just spawn instances. Uh, I mean, you you can just create an application, give it to them, and they'll manage it. You don't have to really interfere into anything. And uh, we we thought Docker is the way to go. So right now, how do you handle multiple servers in this case? So basically, let's see. Currently talking so, about one server. Let's say I want to have ten thousands or hundreds of instances running. Uh -huh. How do you handle that in this? Uh, as of now, we, we you know we really didn't have uh, uh, a scenario wherein we had to you know look into thousand instances. But uh, we can easily manage twenty, thirty. That works for us. Okay, that's our production. But yeah, uh, it's a staging setup. Hey, uh, hi. Yeah. So uh, you 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 have done something like you committed the code and then uh, and then and then it committed, right? So so after that, a trigger has been done to Suru to start the Docker and then to initialize, right? Yes. So so how do you how do you do that sort of a sort of a workflow with like you know you you have to have a predefined installation of Suru on that system, and uh, any code, uh, you know, post post hook, you know, like the post hook create. I mean, like post commit trigger, uh, hook trigger. So you keep that the Suru based uh, uh, configuration, something like that. What do you do that? Yeah, there are uh, there are a lot of files basically. So you mentioned all of those, uh, uh, you know, where, where uh, you want to deploy your code. All of that is mentioned in your Suru conf, and. Uh, you have a requirements.apt file, and there is a deploy script also. So uh, once that is read, your deploy script will deploy. All of that is mentioned in your requirements.apt, and just create everything. You really don't have to look into anything else. Okay. Does it does it does it work at a branch level, or does it work at a multiple Git level? Uh, no, it doesn't. I guess. Uh, uh, 
I I'll have to check that because it's it's a post receive hook. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So 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 I mean like staging development. Uh, so these all different different branches, right? So so then if I want to check it, then how Docker understands it and how Suru does it in different configurations. No, I I didn't get the second part. So I was just asking like the Suru based configuration on different branches. How exactly the Docker knows it actually? Uh, I can we'll take take yeah, this off. Yeah, we'll take it off. I, I yeah, don't no have a, we'll take it off time, I guess. Hello, am I audible? At the back. So it's a Friday evening. You are sitting with your friends at Twa, having your favorite, you know, be beverage, whatever you like, and suddenly this happens. A server goes down, you know, and you were not even responsible for it. You should not even have received that alert, but you received it because a new guy. misconfigure the notification system and that ruins all your mood and believe me it has happened with every one of you right so as you make your next multi million dollar company you add more people you add more hardware you add more software this problems will go from bad to worse and at direct i we have faced the same issue we have over 1000 servers physical boxes 100 vms distributed across 10 co-location centers and over 25000 and growing checks every day you can imagine the number of the amount of noise being created and the number of people being disturbed when they should not be so this is what happens this is the monitoring system it explodes alerts and there's one single guy the l1 engineer staring at the dashboard and thinking oh my god now what to do same like him he is surrounded by alerts and it's a flood and there's a team lead on fire and he doesn't know what to do next he has no information he has just a million of events running down to him so my friend sathe as you call him uh, has wrote this we have made an app an app suit that meets the need of every guy in the chain from an l1 engineer to the head of say the operations to the sad guy to the new joiny to the team lead and the end customer the customer to whom you're serving your services so one app to rule them all one app to find them one app to bring them all and obscureness combine them so what do we have we have events we have alerts generated from monitoring systems you have nagios pingdom you know any kind of uh, monitoring systems you might have you might have uh, hooks from logstash raising events when uh, there are anomalies you might have metric events you just have events that's it and what do we want we want sla we want to make sure that our product is meeting the uptime we want we have promised our customer that Uh, we'll provide you 99.99 percent uptime. We are better than the other company, but how do we figure out at our own? We want statuses. We want status dashboards, right? We want progress reports on an incident. We want correlations. We want RCAs. We want a lot of things. And what do we have? 
we just have events, alerts that are generated from the system. Now, coming back to the L1 engineer, what would have helped him if there's an alert that has occurred, if there was a knowledge base existing where he could just search Apache and say the server name with the tags, and he would have got a recent history saying, okay, this was the issue that occurred. Or say a new guy has joined in today, and 10 days ago, a similar issue has occurred, but he has no idea of what occurred 10 days ago. So if there would have been a system where he could have knowledge bases, or there would be a way where he could escalate alerts automatically. He doesn't have to call up ma uh, folks manually saying, hey, dude, it's 10 minutes. I'm unable to fix it. Can you look at it? Then even if after half an hour it's not fixed, again, he has to call up someone else. Hey, can you look at it? It's not yet fixed. So for an L1 engineer, that's what he wants. For a team lead, he wants dashboards. He wants product health reports. He wants to see if the uptime numbers are met. He wants to see which is the most problematic endpoint. What are the frequently occurring outages? What are the servers that are going down frequently? So he has his dashboards where he can see trends. What are my S1 events? How many S1 incidents are there? What are, which is the most affected colo? Which is the most affected product? What is uh, the frequency? When, at what time am I getting these incidents? And he can see the list of all servers and services that are affected currently. Or he can see uptime numbers, right? Say you have uh, 10 different endpoints for a particular product. You can see which is the most trouble-making uh, trouble endpoint. For an end customer, as a customer, you want to know the status of your services proactively, not reactively. It's always good to be proactive for a customer. So if he can know what your services are like now, are they up, are they facing any issue? If they are facing any issue, what are the action, actions being taken upon? And how, what is the ETA and everything? That's when a customer will be happy. So we built this system called Slant. It's an app suit which has a various number of apps. It manages automatic escalations. It manages uh, service and, uh, sorry, SLAs. It manages incidents, it manages your contacts, it manages your on-call, it manages your calendar, it manages your scheduled maintenances, and it manages your product definitions. It knows when which server belongs to which product. So for the new culture, we are changing the culture at our company. So now the L1 engineer, when he joins, he just, the first time he logs in the system, his contact is automatically created in the app. You just, he just has to make sure he's in the correct groups, his on-call calendaring is correct, and that's it. All the escalations are set from previously. And his, uh, he has a knowledge base uh, of RCAs. When, you, when we have outages, we make post-mortem tickets, we make RCAs, we add tags. And he has a knowledge base of it. So whenever something goes wrong, he just searches in, uh, in that, and he finds the answer. For a team lead, not only for a team lead, other members in the team, there are dashboards, there are apps which shows, uh, you know, what is the troubleshooting endpoints, what are the incidents, what are the current actions, who is working on what, what are, who has acted, who has commented it. You can just type out a comment and make it public so that the customer can see it. For a customer, he has everything proactively. He doesn't have to call your helpline and ask, hey, what's, what's the status of my SMTP? Why is my mail not going out? Right? So this is what we have built. Yeah, so uh, any questions? Um, could you just clarify how uh, this this uh, this bunch of events which you get from your monitoring system, how does it flow into the various uh, dashboards right. that you've seen? So uh, if I go to the architecture of the application, it's a very simple architecture. What we have done over here is we have built a system in Ruby 
it lists, it, uh, you can make API calls from any of your monitoring system. So we are source agnostic. We don't care what your monitoring system is. You, whether you are in Pingdom, whether you are using Nagios or any other monitoring systems, we, are, we don't care. We just deploy a monitoring system once and configure it to send events to our slant. It, uh, you can make API calls or you can send emails. You can write wrappers over it. So, uh, and you can process those uh, events. Once those events are received, we have a rules processing engine where you can write rules. These are, this is simple Ruby code where you can write if condition saying that if this is a server and this is a service, make it an S1 or make it S2, right? Uh, that's a rule, rules engine. And once that's a processed event is formed, uh, you know, uh, S1 events are taken into computation for outages and SLAs and uh, notifications according to the escalation policies. So that's a fair, rough architecture that about slant. Uh, how do I plug in my custom events into it? And let's say uh, a simple cron is running. Yeah. Look, looking at some basic parameters, CPU, I/O, etc., cetera, etc., cetera. Uh, and it decides that uh, CPU is above 40 percent, there is a warning. CPU is above 60 percent, there is a uh, critical. So it's a, it's, a, it's not a Nagio or a sensor based Yes. Code. So uh, you can basically make API calls to the system, right? Mm -hmm. So you can just create a hash so, of. So it's a, it's a REST API. Uh, yeah, REST API. Yeah. Okay. So you you just mentioned that your tool calls APIs from multiple monitoring tool, and then it kind of you know helps your bunch of group mm -hmm. of people here. Uh, I'm just curious to know how many hours is your team spending to constantly build these REST APIs? Because let's say I build a service or an app, right? When I build my app, I'm going to have a bunch of templates because I want to know certain conditions about my app to be monitored. Right. Right. As a developer, like it's in my org, a developer builds their own template for monitoring. Mm -hmm. Then you have this tool which has to probably monitor the same thing, right? So you I'm, make an API call to us. So whenever there's a if you are making your monitoring. tool basically I, I'm sorry, the tool basically is the front end for your knock per person, right? The, I'm looking at your L one person yeah, or right. you know. So the API calls, there are all these different monitoring tools. Let's say there's an OS or whatever, mm. right? There's going to be templates lying in there. How, how are you connecting it? You're constantly spending cycles. Uh, no. Doing so what this, we or? have done is, uh, yeah, I think. Uh huh. Yeah. Uh, not really, they don't need to be aware of your systems prematurely. As soon as it comes, uh, it would process it into the common category, into the common data pool. And if you want, you can add your own uh, service configurations where you would say, if I get an event with this particular condition that's met, process it in certain ways, have certain associations to it. So you are exposing... We are exposing the web, API, It's completely yeah. on a simple web server. Yeah. I mean, it's all on the Rest UI. API. You don't need to do anything. Okay. Will it send before the uh, happen the that event event or uh, after the event? event? Sorry, uh, you're saying uh, uh, it is a handling on the events. No? Mm. So how we configure that event? Uh, will it send that uh, event is uh, happening before uh, before that or after after that event? We suppose so when an us yeah. We suppose my Apache is, uh, Apache server or whatever server is hitting around uh, uh, thousand uh, thousand records or more than requests. If I Uh, will it send before the before hitting the that uh, request? No, it's okay. when the server sends an event to us. Yeah. That so when the server sends an event, according to your escalation policy and your settings, say email or mobile phone, whatever, okay. you get an SMS or an email. So that will take uh, care in the uh, logic or uh, in whatever you provide in that uh, that will take care. Yes, according to the policy you have set over there.
ओके थैंक यू